this uh, video here is just a little chip control uh, demonstration for uh, John Saunders and anybody else who's having trouble getting a chip to break in mild steel. This is a uh, CNMP 432 insert made by Mitsubishi and I'll show you the package here in a bit but uh, this is a two inch piece of cold or hot rolled 1018 it's mild steel and uh, we're going to go ahead and touch off here and I'm going to take a I'm going to take a 200 thou cut off the OD uh, be a 100 thou radial at 8 thousandths per rev 600 RPM Alright, here we go. Alright, so there you can see the surface finish looks pretty good. That's a pretty high feed, but uh, that cleans up real nice. So, now I'll, uh, I captured some of the chips. I'll pull them out and show them to you while uh, I'm looking over, we're going over the package. Okay, so here's our pile of chips and our inserts. This is a, uh, this is the insert. This is my go-to insert. I got a bunch of these. Bought them off of eBay several years ago in a big lot, so I got about a hundred of them. And uh, you can see it's a CNMP, but it's double-sided, so you can use both sides. And you can see it's also got a high, sharp chip breaker. So even, even with the nose tipped down like it is in a negative insert, you still get a positive cutting edge. So it makes real nice chips, even in gummy stuff like 1018. So you can see here we got these nice blue chips. They was coming off of the tool kind of a light straw or tan color and uh, as soon as they hit the chip pan they would already turned that dark blue which is uh, working at just about as hard as uh, as you can really that was uh, 600 rpm which on a, a two inch uh, two inch diameter bar which is what we had there was uh, that's 315 surface feet a minute and these could be run faster because this grade this uh, it's a US 70, uh, 735 is actually made for stainless and high uh, temperature alloys so uh, you could push it harder than that though this blue color here is telling me that that's a pretty hot chip to start with uh, the finish is good uh, you could even use this on aluminum uh, it'll break a chip but it won't leave a very good surface finish it'll leave kind of a hazy finish behind but it's good for rough and aluminum if you've got to really peel off a lot of material it'll break a chip and won't, you won't end up with aluminum wool as Tom Lipton would say I'd say this is about a 15 or a 20 year old technology but it, it cuts good and especially on a manual machine you're not going to push them any harder than you would a, a 15 year old you know NC lay so I don't worry about that too much uh, you know especially with a little machine like uh, John's got in them uh, Tormox the, the high sharp the, the, the sharp, nice sharp cutting edge and he would actually probably want to go this is a 432 which is a 32nd inch radius on the nose He'd probably want to go to a 431 or a 430.05, which has a really sharp nose on the insert, like this here. That's a uh, that's my go-to aluminum finishing insert. It's a, a 4 430.005 from Max Pro. It's a CNM CNMP double-sided. These are just polished, uh, no no coating on them or anything, and uh, they they will just they will cut aluminum like it is a mirror. They really work like a champ. They're not really good for anything else, but uh, for what they're what they're made for, they cut like a champ. So that's what I suggest. Any of you guys that's got uh, smaller machines that want the rigidity of of course this one's been relieved so you get up next to a you get up next to a, a center with it. But you know they can they start out about this wide. And uh, 
if you'd like to have a the rigidity of the big holder on a smaller machine, a lower horsepower machine, then even with the negative tooling, if you go to the positive rake inserts, you'll save a lot of horsepower. It won't bog down. I mean, you know, you're probably still not going to be able to take a 200 thou cut on a Tormach, but you could probably take a 100 thou roughing, would install the machine out, and it'll still break a chip. But a 100 thou, even with this 32nd inch nose radius, you're still well below the radius of the nose. As long as your depth of cut is deeper than the nose radius, you're okay. It'll still the chip breaker will still activate. If you don't get into the chip breaker, then instead of instead of rolling it over and hitting the side of the insert, it rolls it over and hits the corner of the insert. And it, it, generally speaking, it won't break a chip. That's where you get these little spirally jobbers like like this here. Those come off whenever the, the tool is just starting and it doesn't have any place to break a chip yet. Or if you don't have the depth of cut deep enough for a two break a chip. So I use these same kind of inserts on boring bars too as long as the bar is big enough to handle it. Down in the smaller sizes I go to a single sided CCMT or a CCGT or CCGT which is kind of like this. It's a high sharp but it's only a single sided. Still the same shape but a smaller insert would be a 32, 52, 30, 325, two, I, I don't know, I had to go dig them out. I ain't going to bother with it right now. So anyway, there you are. Here you can see the Max Pro aluminum cutting inserts I like so much. The info's there on the label, and so is your contact information. Here's another shot of that Max Pro up close so you can see how the chip breakers ground into it. These inserts are... 100% ground and they're polished on all the cutting surfaces so they're very they're very sharp they're just razor sharp on the edges and uh, that's really what you need to make a good finish in aluminum here's a close up shot of the Mitsubishi insert that this whole uh, video was about these inserts are made specifically for uh, cutting uh, stainless in uh, interrupted conditions so they're very tough which makes them uh, useful through a wide range of, you know, if they can handle stainless up to, I think, 285 Brunel, uh, then in an interrupted cut, then they'll, they'll cut damn near anything you can run across. Here they are side by side. You can see the difference in nose radius here. The gold one on the right has a 132nd radius, and the uncoated one on the left has a 164th radius. Well, I guess that will just about conclude this uh, chip control video. Uh, hope you guys found it informative or useful. Either way, uh, leave me a comment down below so I uh, can tell what I'm doing right or wrong, what you like, what you don't like, etc. And, uh, you know, give me a like, give me a subscribe, or tell me why you won't so I can change things around. Thanks for watching, guys.